Before we start the drills, let us explain why rotational hitting is so successful. It uses the big muscles of the legs and hips, the strongest in the body, to provide the power for hitting. A rapid rotation of the hips ultimately generates a high level of speed. Thus, more power is generated and transferred to the bat head and incoming ball. The rotational swing allows the bat head to travel for a greater period of time in the same path as the flight of the pitch. So even if the swing is early or late, the chances of making good contact are greatly enhanced and batting average is high while strikeouts are dramatically reduced. The swing starts with a short and compact step toward the pitcher. At the same time, the upper shoulders turn in slightly, away from the pitcher, and help wind up the upper body. Like a spring, this creates a loading of power or torque. We move some weight forward onto the front of the lead foot. The rear leg has squatted slightly, with weight and tension loaded onto the big muscles of the back leg. The front heel plants hard, triggering the start of the pivot. The hips then explode open, rapidly rotating. The rear foot pushes the forward drive of the back hip, while the front leg straightens and drives the front hip back. This is a very tight and explosive rotation, generating great power. As the hips start to open, the muscles in the midsection of the body uncoil and follow the opening of the hips. This rotational power travels through the upper body, turning the shoulders and helping to push or extend the arms. The hands and bat handle are propelled towards the ball. The knob of the bat is driven hard on a line, inside the flight of the pitch and towards the center of the ball. This explosive movement will leave the bat head lagging behind the hands. As the lead arm reaches full extension on its straight path towards the ball, rather than let the force of the rotation pull the lead hand off away from the ball, it stays on its path and slows, becoming a pivot point. The rear hip continues to rapidly drive the top hand forward. This causes the wrist to snap or flex sideways, allowing the bat head to rapidly accelerate in an arc to explosive contact with the ball. After contact, we continue to drive through the ball on the same path until both hips are snapped open fully and both arms reach full extension. The wrist will do a true rollover after contact and we let the swing finish naturally. This is a very compact and powerful swing giving maximum power and contact with the ball. Now the fun part has come. We get to learn the drills and we get to go through and see how simple it is to learn this swing. But it's important that we took the time early in the DVD to show you how the swing worked. That way when we go through these four simple drills, you can understand a lot better and get up to speed a lot quicker and understand why we do the drills and how they're done correctly. The first drill we're going to do is called the baboom drill. And that consists of two parts. The butt, which is the load step. Coaches call that the load step. It's a coiling of the upper body and the short step towards the pitcher. And that's followed by the boom, which is the exploding open of the hips. Boom. The reason we call it the baboom is first to make it a simple, fun term for the kids to use. Rather than having to say a load step and then uncoiling of the hips, we can simply say ba and then boom. It's something the kids can understand real well, relate to, and it's uh, another step to involve no thinking and just reacting to a command. Secondly, we use it because it's a great timing device. When the pitch comes in, the bus is supposed to be about a 10% of the effort motion. It's supposed to be quick, compact, a nice relaxed buh reaching towards the pitcher with the foot. And the boom, as the name implies, is the explosive part. Boom. So the kids learn to understand that they can trigger the swing and develop a sense of timing and rhythm by saying ba-boom. The quicker the pitch is, the faster you say the ba-boom. A couple of the final key coaching points on the boom portion here is we want to feel a thrust off of the point of the hip here. It's a thrust forward. Now again, it's a, it's a strong compact rotational movement, but we want to feel a thrust forward from this hip as it rotates forward because that's going to turn our shoulders open. It's going to supply the power, the push we need to take the hands and the bat head through the ball. 
Also, again, during the portion of the opening of the swing, we want to come off the back foot. That means that our power and our weight has been shifted momentarily to the front foot, and then it settles back again to the rear foot. Again, Alex, get into the butt position. Ba. Okay, boom. One of the few pieces of equipment absolutely necessary to implement this program is simply a cheap piece of nylon rope you can get at any hardware store. And we tie it to the fence at approximately the kid's release point. You see Alex holding the ball there. And then we bring it back to the catch's mitt. And that signifies the path of the flight of the ball. Now, although it's not exactly the same because there's going to be a little bit of a hump in the actual path of the pitch, what it does is gives, gives us a, a concrete base to go ahead and swing on top of something that's tangible that we can swing on that is approximately the flight of the path of the ball. So this next drill we're going to do is called the hip angle drill and basically oh. boom. Not only is my bat head traveling in the same path as the flight of the pitch but this drill also helps the kids understand that the hips supply the power and the hips lead the swing. Oh. Boom. Again a good thrust of the hips forward, okay? We want to make sure that front leg locks up, but we also want to get the kids to focus on thrusting the hips forward, driving the bad head along the rope. Back again, Alex. Ba, boom. Good. Now let's have you say it out loud and do it on your own. Ba, boom. Good. Ba, boom. Excellent. You notice we've worked a progression. We've gone from learning the ba-boom, which is the rotation of the hips, which is the major key. Then we've gone to showing the kids how you use a rope to emulate the path of the pitch and how our hips open at the same angle. And whatever angle the hips open, that's the angle the swing is going to follow. So the third thing we're going to use is a jug's tee. We're going to put a ball on top of it, and we're going to go ahead and progress on from that last drill to basically the same thing, except for we want to take and we want to hit the ball with the bat against our hips, and we want to hit it at an angle that is about the same as the pitch was coming in. Well, this does two things. It helps the kids understand that whatever angle we set our hips, we're going to swing and hit the ball at. And the second thing is that it helps them to understand that the hips are leading the swing. The hips are the major driving force behind it. The last of the four drills is the most fun. Here we get to apply that good rotational force we've developed with our hips and the opening of the hips, that good thrust and we get to apply it towards the upper body, and we get to use the hands and the bad head, and we get to drive through the ball. That are, ba, hips start to push open, they open first, the hands lower just a little bit, we push the knob at the ball, we continue to push with the top hand, snap the contact, continue to push all the way through the ball to full extension, the hips are snapped open, the arms are locked, the end of the bat's pointing right at the pitcher, and finally just whatever, however we finish up, is a natural finish. we start to get the feel for the swing. And Alex, you want to get the feel for this hip, giving a good thrust and just driving the bat head along the top of the rope. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. We're able to swing along the top of the rope correctly, getting a good bat snap, and everything else falls into place. Rather than worrying about the wrist snap or the wrist rollover or any of the other elements of it, this is so intuitive you can swing right along the top of the rope and go ahead and develop Short the toss. swing. And we simply now eliminate the jug screen, we move back to the regular appropriate mound distance and we go ahead and we try to give them some game situation at bats. You've noticed that a lot of the swings were taken up in short toss. That's where we developed the skills I think the best. But